So today's video is going to be a little disassembly on this quite small little knife. So if you guys don't know, this is the Honey Badger, but there are three size versions and two steel versions. This one happens to be the HCR 13 MOV right there you can see that on the blade and it is the small version I own the medium version and really loved it but I couldn't find the small ones so long story short Ben of Blade Banter Banter Blade Banker excuse me had bought one from Sean and he wanted to give it to me don't take it in the worst way I know some of you but he also got me the tenacious and the link that Sean was selling and I was absolutely floored by his generosity. So, thank you so much, Ben. The other version of the Honey Badger is in D2, and I believe they don't have the finger choil. But I actually really like the finger choil, especially on this small one, because this is a three-finger knife for me. And it makes it a four-finger knife with the choil. They could do away without the jimping, but I'm not a knife designer, so I can't really tell people uh, what they can and can't do. But Honey Badger came out strong with these knives. And long story short, I absolutely love them. So here we go. The action is actually quite good. And sometimes there is some lock stick going on. Especially if I just roll it out. And I can spidey flick it. And there is some lock stick. There we go. Now it's starting to have some lock stick. So hopefully I can help remove some of that. So I just have a T8 driver here. That is a Ace, and it's a, from an Ace Hardware. Let me get the container of them. And it has a T5, T6, uh, yeah, a T5, a T6, a T7. A T8, a T9, and a T10. And it has six other spaces for some more drivers if you want some. But it actually comes in a pretty nice fake leather. There you can... I'm pretty sure I don't have to zoom in for you to read that. But it comes in a nice little fake leather case. It's a little padded. But it's really nice to throw in your bag if you're going to be doing a lot with Torx bits. Alright. So I will take out the pivot. I'm just going to set that for right now. 
And I'm not going to use the T6 that came with that because I, uh, I stripped it being stupid. So I'm going to also be using my Boker and Weehaw little stubby handle. There we go, and it's starting to come out. Pretty good. Let's move that over there. Alright, you're going off the mat. And I'm really holding this tight because the knife just wants to uh, spring across the room here. About there. So. There we go. And the lock tension, the lock bar tension is actually pretty, pretty substantial. Alright, I'm seeing if I can try and get this out here. Doesn't seem to be wanting to come out, which means that the tolerances are actually pretty damn nice in this thing. And you can, you might be able to see that this is kind of dirty. Oh yeah. It's a bit dirty. So hopefully I can help out the action. It, it was pretty smooth from the factory. but There goes the backspacer. Come on bearings. There you go. Here comes the pivot. And that one's just that. Oh, uh, please. The stop pin is actually pretty wedged in there right now. So I won't have to do anything to get rid of that uh, gunk on the stop pin because I can do that with a little rag. Since this knife is so dirty. I like to have a little Q-tip. Use some alcohol. And pour it everywhere. This just happens to be, if I flip it around, 50% wintergreen alcohol. And I don't like to put it on both ends because I like to dry it off with this other side. Let's put the backspacer up there. You know what? I'm also going to put some alcohol on this little rag here. And I'm going to wipe down the scale. Let's wipe down the scale again. Let's clean off the stop pin a bit. And make sure that's on camera for sure. I have a bad habit of not keeping things on camera. But as I said, this uh, lock bar pressure is actually pretty pretty stiff but I'd rather it be stiff than too loose put that up there gotta find the alcohol part on this there we go and this pivot is D-shaped so, I really, really like that when knife makers do that. Oh yeah, that was dirty. So let's run these bearings. 
man, these are pretty damn thin. Whatever they, whoever put oil in this last, really, they really made sure that it had oil everywhere. So I just take, you might be able to hear a little squeak going on. And you should absolutely, ew, that's nasty, absolutely wipe down the lock face and then dry it. Dry that up in there. Make sure to clean this out. On, on both sides. Alright. And now the knife is ready to be put back together. So you're going to want to put the D-shape in. On the correct side. Let's put the back spacer back on. Push this screw back. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> oh, God. Excuse me, guys. I like to use uh, Hops, Hoppies, number nine. I like to put one drop down that's a little bit much. Make sure it gets some on the pivot. Put the bearing down. I like to put a drop. In the uh... guys, it's late. It's about one twenty uh, a.m. right now for the detent ball. Put one there for this. There we go. Lock bar was keeping the blade up too much. Well, you know what? There's a little trick that I've learned with the Sharpie and the lock face. If you're having some lock stick issues, take some Sharpie and draw a little bit on the lock face. Make sure it's dry, then put a second coat on. Let me make sure I do that here. There we go. All right. Doesn't take a lot of Sharpie to help out with the lock stick. All right. So the back screws are on. There we go. Put the cap back on the oil. God damn. As I said, this knife really loves to come apart. So I'm going to have to hold this so I can grab wherever it is.
There it goes. I like to use the Loctite brand, although Permatex is the first brand that I used, and it turned out to be really quite nice. But always use the blue. Do not use the red. A little bit of excess. Just wipe it off on your pants. Make sure they're not white pants or khaki. Alright, so pivots in. I can breathe. I don't like to put the back screws in with Loctite, mostly because sometimes they don't really need it. And a lot of times you can get some free spinning to go along and you have to put in another driver on the other side and it just gets irritating every once in a while and sometimes they aren't even tooled on the other side like the basic link is you can see hopefully Probably not. Oh well. I'll find a better. Yeah, there it is. So this is my Gerber paraframe. And it just goes straight into the other side. And if you strip out this screw there, you're going to be shit out of luck. You have to send the knife all the way back to Gerber. And especially this pivot, this pivot sucks because you can't even take the knife apart. Yeah, let's give it a... Yeah, that's nice. But I think it's a little too tight. Let's see if there's any blade play. Absolutely no blade play, it's rock solid. So let's back it off a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's really nice. So let's check if there's blade play. There's no blade play. I introduced a tiny bit of blade play. So, scrape back a little bit. Yeah, there is no blade play at all. And for the price, the only kind of brand that has a better action, I think, is the Firebird Gonzo, but also their blades are a little bit heavier. So, the pivot's a little tight on this, but yeah, the blades are bigger and they're a little bit heavier. So yeah, there we go. This Nani Badger is now firing like it should. And it's now as smooth as it's fur.